Welcome to part 5 of our series. Get started with ML Agents in Unity. In this episode, we're going to make some meaningful improvements to our Turtle Agent project, most importantly, in how we train the agent, but also by adding some visual feedback so we can more clearly see what's happening during that training. In the last episode, we wrapped up the core functionality and ran our first training session, getting everything connected between Unity and the Python backend. If you haven't completed parts 1 through 4 yet, I recommend doing that first, as this tutorial picks up right where the last episode left off. You'll find the tutorial series playlist linked in the description below. Before we get started, just a quick note. You can download the complete Unity project for this tutorial by joining my Patreon. Access is available through the Script Surveyor tier for just 3 US dollars per month and it includes this project along with other projects I've created. If you're interested, you'll find the link in the description below. Thank you for your support. Alright, let's get on with the tutorial. Go back to the Unity scene that we were working on in the last episode. To start off, we're going to add a heuristic method to our turtle agent. This will allow us to control the agent manually using the keyboard, which is really useful for testing and debugging the environment. It's especially helpful for checking that the turtle's actions have been correctly assigned. It's good practice to run the environment under manual control first, just to make sure everything is behaving as expected, before we begin a full training session. Open the turtle agent script, and scroll down to the onActionRecieved method. We're going to insert our heuristic method just above it, since the action assigned in the heuristic method will be passed directly into onActionRecieved. By the way, in case you're wondering what the term heuristic means, here's a quick definition. In reinforcement learning, a heuristic refers to a manually coded rule or behavior. In our case, it means we're telling the agent exactly what to do, rather than letting it learn on its own. As I mentioned earlier, this is really useful for testing and debugging. Anyway, let's go ahead and create a stub for our heuristic method. Notice that we have overridden this method as it is a key ML agents method declared in the agent base class. Let's now complete the method, insert the following code. It's important to note that this heuristic method will only run when the agent's behavior type is set to heuristic only, which means the training backend is bypassed entirely. In this case, instead of relying on the training backend to decide the agent's next action, we're manually supplying that action ourselves right here in the code. Let's take a closer look at what this code is doing. First, the actions out parameter is passed into the method. Actions out is an action buffers object. The action buffers object is used to store the action values that will later be passed on to on action received. Since our turtle agent only uses discrete actions, we create a discrete actions out variable to handle them directly. Next, we set a default action of zero, meaning do nothing. This ensures that the turtle stays still unless a key is pressed. Then, we check for keyboard input using Unity's input get key method. If the up arrow key is pressed, we set the action to 1, making the turtle move forward. Similarly, pressing the left or right arrow keys will set the action to 2 or 3, making the turtle rotate left or right. These values are passed to on action received, which then calls move agent to process the movement logic. This ensures the turtle responds correctly to our inputs. In short, the heuristic method allows us to control the agent manually by mapping keyboard inputs to their corresponding discrete actions. Now that we've implemented the heuristic method, let's test it inside Unity. Save the script and switch back to the Unity editor. Select the turtle agent in the hierarchy panel. In the inspector, find the behavior parameters component. Set the behavior type to heuristic only. This tells ML agents to ignore training and instead use the actions generated by our heuristic method. Now let's test this heuristic method. Press play and try moving the turtle agent using the arrow keys. Once you have finished testing, hit the stop button to exit play mode. You can keep the behavior set to heuristic only for now. Let's move on to something else. Let's add a simple UI element to display some agent stats in real time. We'll create a GUI turtle agent game object 
which will reference the turtle agent and display the following information. The current episode number, the number of steps in the episode, and lastly, the agent's cumulative reward. OK, before we create our stats GUI, we need to make a couple of small changes to the turtle agent script. So let's open it up again. Notice that we have two private member variables, current episode and cumulative reward. We need to change them from private to public so that our stats GUI can access them. Let's do that now. Also, we don't want these variables to appear in the inspector, so let's add the hide in inspector attribute to both of them. And finally, let's rename both variables by removing the underscore and capitalizing the first letter. Alright, now save the script again and return to the Unity editor. Let's start building our GUI. Go to the Hierarchy panel and create a new empty game object. Name it GUI underscore Turtle Agent. Now go to the Scripts folder and create a new script also called GUI underscore Turtle Agent. Open the script. Since we want to access public variables from a Turtle Agent instance, we first need to create a reference to one. Add the following variable to the script. To keep things simple, we're going to use one of Unity's built-in GUI systems, known as IM GUI or Immediate Mode GUI. It's an older system, but still very handy for quick debug overlays like this, especially when we just want to display some simple text. That said, I wouldn't recommend using IM GUI for any production UIs. We'll be using GUI Label to show our agent stats, but first we will define a few GUI style variables to control how the text looks. Add the following. We'll now define each of these GUI styles in the start method, like so. Now let's display the agent stats using Unity's onGUI method. This is a special method that runs every frame and allows us to draw GUI elements directly onto the screen. Below the start method, add the following code. OK, let's see what this onGUI method does. We start by creating two strings, one for the episode and step count, and another for the reward value. Then we pick a style for the reward label. If the agent's reward is negative, we use the red negative style. Otherwise, we use the green positive style. Finally, we use two GUI label calls to draw the text onto the screen, positioning them using simple rect coordinates and applying our chosen styles. And that's the complete script. Save it, and then switch back to Unity. First, in the hierarchy panel, make sure the environment is expanded. Now select the GUI turtle agent game object. Then add the GUI turtle agent script to it by dragging the script into the inspector. Next, we need to connect our turtle agent to the GUI script. With the GUI turtle agent game object still selected, you should now see a turtle agent field in the inspector. Drag the turtle agent game object from the hierarchy into this field. Lastly, Let's drag our GUI game object above our environment in the scene hierarchy, just to keep things tidy. OK, let's save our scene. Now let's test that everything works. Click the play button. Once again, use the arrow keys to move the turtle. You should see our GUI giving real-time feedback on the state of the turtle agent. OK, hit stop to exit play mode. Let's create one more visual feedback indicator. Every time an episode ends, we'll make the ground flash a colour to indicate whether it ended in success or failure. Green will mean the agent successfully reached the goal, and red will mean it failed to do so. We are going to implement this feature in the Turtle Agent script, so let's open it up again. Alright, let's implement the ground flash effect in our Turtle Agent script. We'll start by adding a few new variables. Insert a renderer variable named ground renderer, just below the goal variable. This will reference the ground plane's renderer once we assign the ground plane in the inspector. Then, add these two private variables. The first will store the ground's original color, and the second will manage the flash ground coroutine. Next, add this code to the end of the initialize method. Here we are simply storing the default color of the ground. That way we can fade back to it after each flash. It might seem logical to place the flash effect inside the end episode method. But unfortunately, end episode is a built in method provided by ML agents, and it's not designed to be overridden, so we can't insert any custom logic directly into it. Instead, 
I've opted to handle any end-of-episode logic, like visual feedback or cleanup, at the start of On Episode Begin. We will trigger the ground flash effect from there, based on how the previous episode ended. Insert this block of code near the top of the On Episode Begin method, just before we increment the current episode counter. Essentially, this code flashes the ground based on whether the agent earned a positive or negative reward in the last episode. Notice that we start a coroutine called flash ground. We're using a coroutine here because it lets us smoothly fade the ground's color back to its original state without blocking the rest of the agent's execution. This way, the turtle can continue training while the flash effect plays out in the background. We are getting an error as the flash ground method does not exist yet. So let's implement it now. Underneath the on episode begin method, insert this flash ground coroutine. Notice, however, that the I enumerator type cannot be found. This is due to a missing using statement. Let us quickly fix that. We need to add using system collections to the top of the file. Let's return to the flash ground method. This coroutine takes in a target color and a duration. It starts by immediately setting the ground to the target color, either green or red. Then, inside a while loop, we gradually fade that color back to the ground's original color using a lerp function. OK, so that's it for the code. Save the script and return to the Unity editor. Select the turtle game object. In the inspector, find the turtle agent script. You should now see a new field called ground renderer. Inside the environment, you should have a ground game object. Drag that into the ground renderer field. Also, double check that the goal field still has a valid reference to the goal game object. OK, let's enter play mode to verify that our new flash ground feature works. As before, use the arrow keys to control the turtle. If everything is set up correctly, the ground should flash green each time the turtle reaches the goal. Once you are satisfied that it's working, hit stop to exit play mode. This brings us to the final but very important part of our tutorial. If you've already run a full training session for the turtle, you probably noticed that it takes quite a bit of time. Fortunately, there's a simple way to radically speed that up. ML agents support something called parallel training. This means we can run multiple copies of the same environment at once, each one training its own agent independently, but all sharing the same AI model or policy. Running multiple environments in parallel allows our agent to collect experience more quickly and that can significantly accelerate training. To make this happen, we'll first turn our environment game object into a prefab and then duplicate it several times in the scene. Let's do that now. In the Project tab, under Assets, create a new folder and name it Prefabs. Now, in the Hierarchy panel, select the Environment Game Object and drag it into the Prefabs folder. The Environment object should now turn blue in the Hierarchy indicating that it's a prefab. The benefit of turning it into a prefab is that we can now easily duplicate it, and if we need to make any changes to the environment later, we'll only have to update the prefab once. Now let's create a few duplicates of the environment for parallel training. In the hierarchy, right-click on the environment prefab and choose Duplicate, or simply press Ctrl D. You can repeat this a few times to create multiple copies. In this example, I'm going to create 12. Just keep in mind that more environments will use more system resources, so don't go overboard. Also, make sure to space out your environments so they're not overlapping in the scene view. Since we now have multiple environments in the scene, it's worth reiterating why we used local position and local rotation in the turtle agent script. These local values keep each agent's observations relative to its own environment, and not the global scene. This ensures consistent training across all instances, no matter where they're placed. Before we start training, there's one quick but important step we need to take. Earlier, we changed the turtle agent's behavior type to heuristic only, so we could control it with the keyboard. But for training to work, we need to switch that back. So in the Project tab inside the Prefabs folder, double-click the Environment Prefab. This should open it in Prefab mode. You'll know you're in prefab mode by the change in the hierarchy. It now shows only the contents of the prefab. In this hierarchy view, select the turtle game object. 
then head over to the inspector. Scroll down to the Behavior Parameters component and find the Behavior Type field. Set this back to default. To exit Prefab mode, click the back arrow in the top left corner of the Hierarchy panel. This has now reset the behavior type for all agents across all of our environments. Alright, now that our environments are ready, let's kick off a new training session using ML agents. First be sure to save your Unity scene. Then while keeping the Unity editor open, launch an Anaconda PowerShell terminal. We are about to type some Conda commands. I've provided a link to a list of these commands in the description. First let's activate our ML agents environment with the following command. Conda, activate ML agents. Next, we need to change directory to the root folder of your Unity project. Use the cd command to do this. Once you're in the right folder, run the ML agents learn command to start training. I've set the run ID to many turtles here, but feel free to use your own ID. ML agents should eventually start and prompt you to press the play button in Unity. So let's do that. Keep the terminal open, switch over to Unity, and press play. We can now see our turtle agents running around their environments, all helping to train the shared policy. Back in the PowerShell terminal, you should see that training is progressing much faster now. Eventually, after 500,000 steps, the training run should come to a halt. Once training is complete, the terminal output should look something like this. Notice that when training completes, it exports an Onyx file. This Onyx file is the trained neural network, the AI model, or policy, that your agents have just learned. You can now use this file to run your agents in inference mode without the Python training backend. And that's exactly what we'll do in the next episode. I'll show you how to load the Onyx model into Unity and run your trained agent in real time. As always, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.